for a YouTube sticker. Um, doing trying something a little bit different now. Um, I've got some screen capturing software, so I thought I'd show you guys how I use or how I used BFD2 in Breath. Um, so obviously you've heard the single, you've seen the video, uh, and it should be on iTunes this week. Um, but as you know from watching the webcast and stuff in my little studio here, I can't really mic my drums up, and um, but I can mic them up to a you know to a good enough level. But when we were sending stuff off to Eddie, it's nice to have stuff as good as that could possibly sound. I made the decision that I would achieve better results uh, using BFD2 and the Platinum Samples um, expansion pack by Joe Barassi. So. I use BFD2 in Logic, Logic 9, you can hear Mrs. in the background making toast for a little one, he's a lot better by the way, really nasty, never seen him so well. So yeah, this is Logic 9, Logic 9 Pro, uh, this is the BFD2 plugin, um, and I use this, I trigger it live by my Roland TD20, my stripped down kit. Um, which mimics my proper setup. So it's, I've only got rack tom, floor tom, bass drum, snare, two crashes, and riding hats. That's it. That's all I use. Um, I might go for another floor tom at some point, but that's all I really need just to lay down grooves and stuff. And I enjoy playing that kit. So, um, so yeah, you basically within BFD2, you load in your sample library here. If I click here and load presets, you'll see I have stacks. Um, I've got pretty much got every expansion pack by FX and Platinum Samples. Um, and you've got a selection of different drum kits here. So these are all um, Andy John's expansion kits. Um, some tasty ones that come with BFT2. The only thing with the ones that come with BFT2 is they're uh, less velocities. So when you're playing them as a V drummer, they're not as real to play. They're great for programming and stuff. So if you guitarists out there, if you grab yourself a copy of BFD2, you can use all the loops and stuff that, that just come with it, and a lot of the expansion packs come with um, MIDI packs as well. And Platinum Samples even released a, a MIDI pack, groove pack of jazz stuff, which is pretty cool. Um, so you just go through and choose your kit as you want. Um, there's loads of predefined kits, or you can make your own kit up, which is really easy. Just double click on the instrument, and then you can choose click kicks. Um, which Eddie would really hate because they still insist they're called bass drums. And here everything's called kit. <laughs> anyway, you can have things from dust bins, boxes, whatever. Loads in there. Um, so yeah, I'll just let me play the track in the background. So you just load it in. Bring that level down a bit. Load it in, then you key map everything. So if I go to the key map section, you see it all jumping around. Basically, every pad I have is assigned a MIDI note, like you would a piano. If you think of it as just a MIDI keyboard, drum, snare, hats, whatever. Exactly the same, doesn't matter what you're playing on V drums, uh, on the um, you know, keyboard, cat things, whatever they're called, uh, you know, multi pad. Things you hear in mallets, all that kind of stuff. It's always that the same, you just assign instruments to notes. Um, the only thing that's different is the hi hat because the hi hat I've got is two moving parts, which isn't great for uh, V drums, I must admit. I'm actually going back to a previous model, which is just one piece when I get it in stock. Um, but you have to assign the uh, hi hat the different um, positions. So you've got Closed, quarter, half, three quarters, open. And then of course you've got those positions with the stick on the edge and the, and the tip on the top. Again, different sounds. Um, and because it's V-drums, the hi-hat is very, very sensitive. So the only thing I have to really edit is, this is the um, hyper editor within Logic. Um, if you guys use Cubase, then you've got the the drum editor, MIDI drum editor, which is wicked, I use that. I saw the first bit of software I used was Cubase, and that was only a few years ago, so I'm really new to all this. Um, and I found the drum editor really great, because in the key, um, what's it called, piano roll, you can, if you assign a drum a uh, or a um, 
drum to a key, that key actually had the name of it. So when you look at it, if you go around in piano roll, you can see what's got, what's kick, what's snare, whatever. Logic doesn't do that, which is a bit of a pain in the bum. But you can create your own um, hyper editor sets. Uh, you can't save a hyper editor set, but you can copy it from one project to another, so you, you just end up rolling on. Um, if we're going back to the foot control, the hi hat, you can see here this is my foot pressure. And I have to go in and manually draw in the position when you're playing grooves because it fluctuates so much and it can be really moody between the positions and occasionally you get the sort of sloppy sound and whatever. Um, the hi hat pedal channel is me opening and closing the pedal. So you can hear in this section, this is me open and close the hi-hat while I rock play on the right cymbal. It's quite subtle. So this is the foot opening and closing. This is the, um, that's the foot pressure rather. And what I'm putting down, I'm opening and closing. And you can see, I don't edit any of the actual notes I play. I tidy a few of them up, don't really move anything about. I like the whole purpose of me using this for me is I'm a real drummer, but I'm playing a virtual instrument. Some people would go in and they quantize everything, they move everything about, that kind of stuff. I'm not into that. I just literally think, right, it's like the ride cymbal, for example, can sound really moody. Um, so you've got the edge here and the, and the um, hit. So if I move these over, for example, if it lets me down to the, oop, down here to the edge, you'll get this washy sound, which sounds terrible. being a feature on players, the cymbal moves around, you're going to catch that every now and then. So you're playing away and all of a sudden you go, which is a bit like, Ugh. but knowing you have to, um, or I think of as I'm playing, um, I hear what I'm playing sort of thing, so I know what I'm going to correct as I go. Um, same thing with the snare. Uh, sometimes you hit the rim accidentally or, it, or the snare will knock against the tom because I've got my set up, it's not on a rack anymore, it's all on stands. So sometimes you knock things and you get these sort of things just tapping away. Um, but you just go in and you tidy it all up. Um, and it's really, for for me as a drummer, it's, it's great. I think, you know, I love recording my kit. I've got my drum workshop kit, which is spot on. Uh, I'm going to do a review on that for you guys as well at some point. Um, but in my studio, I'm never going to achieve these results. I haven't got a nice ambient room and I haven't got stack of Neve or API preamps and all that kind of stuff and so you know but this on the other hand you just need a, a quick enough machine away you go um, the only thing with the BFD2 plugin running the platinum samples packs because I run them at maximum velocity layers which as you know from MIDI is 128 or 127 um, and BFD2 actually has 250 odd velocity layers and the reason it has that is because it alternates the hits. You can set it so you never hear the same hit twice in a row, to theoretically. Um, but of course the limitations are, it takes up a lot of RAM. So although I'm only using a small kit here, so like I said, that one's empty. That's it, I'm probably using about a gig of RAM there. Um, now I've got a Mac Pro that's loaded up with 14 gig of RAM. I know it's a bit excessive, um, but Logic still has the limitations of uh, as an application only accessing, I think it's just over two gig or about two gig of RAM. So by the time you've got a project loaded up, you can imagine this project breath with all the I didn't actually um, mix this one as you know Eddie did, but by the time you've got like thirty channels, you've got them all loaded up with plugins, EQs, compressors, reverbs, that kind of stuff, you're, and you're running BFD two as a plug-in at the same time, you're really pushing your luck.